do it, but they'll get something that might do to a talk. Um, I'm from Eurotox Ireland, Rob is a Eurotox chef. That's a community that was set up in 1986 by Murphy Allen and Bollywood House. Most people probably know at this stage, it's a pioneer when it comes to um, growing your own food and having a lot of integrity around sourcing and local and seasonal food budgets. And that is, um, that's what the ethos of Eurotox, uh, the chef community is. So, um, we were going to show you a video of um, a symposium that's gone on two years in a row now in Galway, uh, set up by another Eurotalk chef called J.P. McMahon. Um, and it's called Food on the Edge, and it's bringing uh, major international uh, chefs, very influential, very high profile people, uh, into Ireland to discuss all kinds of issues relating to uh, the environment and to uh, the social equality issues around uh, accessibility of affordable good food and about uh, obviously environmental impact and all kinds of issues like that. And uh, as Rob will show you now, um, chefs are taking on a new role in society because of the role that they play in the distributing of food in, uh, in uh, selling food. So I'll hand you over to, uh, to Rob. Hi, hey, Ben. It's nice to meet you. Um, yeah, as Karen is saying, I'm a member of Eurotox, um, and it's, uh, it's something that's very important to us chefs to teach young chefs, um, obviously, because it's the, the future is, is the younger chefs. Um, the importance of food where I come from province. We have so many um, amazing suppliers um, where we always have had in Ireland um, and producers like um, and I just think it's now the chefs are really stepping up to, to use it um, and it's very important to, for us to to show people what, what amazing what amazing what Ireland has to offer. Um, as I said, there's on the screen there is uh, Renner Zeppi. Uh, he's one of the top chefs in um, the world. Uh, his whole thing across behind food is just about foraging local seasonality. It's about what you can pick that morning, which is fresh, and serve it to your customers. Um, it's not about air miles. It's, uh, it's about just, uh, I mean, obviously, for, for him, he's a large restaurant team, but it's just the boss behind it. Um, you know, there's no, as I said, it's, a lot of it is vegetarian based, um, so a lot of it's forged locally and picked locally. Um, seasonality is also a huge thing, which, which is very important for us, um, because it's when it's, it's, it's when it's at its best. Uh, in terms of that house, we have our own garden, so we pick up an awful lot of our own um, vegetables and stuff, which supply the restaurants. So for a lot of chefs, it's important. Not everyone is lucky enough, I think, to have their own gardens and stuff like that. But um, we have two potty tunnels, um, and then we have a walled kitchen garden. So we grow all our own herbs. Um, we even have our own grapes. Grapes we really didn't they actually have a disease, so we weren't able to use them. But we would have been not there for wine, but um, strawberries, rhubarb. Um, it's quite a whole restaurant. I'd probably do about 40 people a night. Um, but the only thing I'd have to buy was lemons. Um, and now if I could grow my own lemons, I would. But. Uh, yeah, so, so I mean, like the chefs will go up in the morning, every morning, and then we just pick what we need, and we design a menu around that. So we're not going to look at something that people, you know, people want to, but, you know, we're not going to try and make something that we feel we um, need to do. We need to buy imported stuff. It's not about that. Um, the chef here from Silo, he did, um, a, I think he was on first or second in Food Niche, which was, it was amazing. Um, but his restaurant was, totally about sustainability. He was saying I think the only thing that they couldn't find that was um, chemical-wise that was the cleaning oven. It was the only thing. Everything else is like, um, it's like the waste-free. It was plates to recycling, to, to the food, to his furniture in the restaurant. Now that's the extreme side of it, but we need people like that for us to see. And if we can all do our part, um, use local, pick local, um, Ireland is a small place, so it is local, you know. Um, there's also uh, Dan's another chef here. He's, he's what we're kind of about is his own farm outside of New York, so as more chefs get more involved in where their food comes from, um, opposed to just looking at a catalog and ordering stuff. Um, yeah, he's created his own farm, so they actually supply themselves with their own animals, their own veg, their own produce as well. A lot more people are looking this way. So I think we're all going back to our, our roots, um, more so, um, and traditions about fermenting and picking. A lot of it's kind of trending a lot, I think, now, but um, it's something that's always been done, you know, mm -hmm. curing, 
Um, I care a lot of meat. Uh, that was my dad's. My dad is Polish, um, so it was in their tradition to do a lot of fermenting, a lot of pickling, um, curing, making sausages, using up all byproducts that generally end up in the bin. Um, but you can make amazing products out of it. Uh, and he slowly started, started teaching me about 10 years ago, and I started getting into a lot of that, and they do an awful lot of that. I developed my own smokehouse and curing room, as well as the, the pickling and curing and preserving. Um, it's, it's just stuff that, you know, and it, it's humble ingredients as well, a lot of it is, um, and it's just um, preserving them. Well, it's what we yeah. do in where we yeah. are, as opposed to flying things in when you don't need to, or, or forcing a higher yield of products that don't necessarily naturally grow healthy here. And in your talks as well, with the younger chefs, we're trying to teach them all of this, um, that it's important to, to, to appreciate where your food comes from. Um, that's a picture of the restaurant. Uh, well, the restaurant's a little bit further down, but that's Tankers Town House, um, just the main entrance into it there. So, uh, this would be one of our polytunnels. Um, and that was just the kind of sort of changing around. But I think that was probably taken during the summer there, that's with Corjet, Corjet flowers. Uh, that's Connor. Um, he's just one of So every day we generally just go up and pick what we need. If we didn't have something, we'd change the menu. Um, that's just one of the other dishes. That's just the food I, I suppose I, I would do myself. I'm trying to keep kind of earthy and kind of rustic and kind of close to nature to represent that because I mean that's where, where it's coming from. Um, I don't kind of want to, to you know, make it too forced looking. I really like this dish actually, because, particularly because it looks like the vegetable garden. Is that edible side? It is, yeah, no, you know, well. it's made with uh, I think dehydrated olives and. Um, Toasted sourdough, so you can remix it. A lot, a lot of the uh, processes kind of take take a lot of time, but it's just to kind of I suppose yeah, it's just to show that look, it looks like it's soil and it's what's come out of the ground and you're eating it. But obviously you can't kind of go up to it and start munching on soil. So it's, it's, not, it's not pleasant for anybody. So, so as chefs, we have to change it that way. But I suppose we're trying to kind of keep it look more natural. Um, you know, it's a nice idea though that because it's faithful, but it's creating a dialogue then between production, the food, the cooking, and then the dialogue who's going to eat it. It's all from the estate, so the whole process then is part of what they're yeah. eating. And the story behind it, we kind of want to create a story, we want to show people where it comes from, what they're eating, and why we're doing it, and why we work so hard to do it. Um, so it's, not, it's a bit more than just a meal, you know, it's not about people coming just to fill themselves up for a few, it's just about an experience and enjoying themselves. Um, Obviously that's, I think there's some cardoons and then some artichokes. Cardoons, I don't know if anyone uses cardoons or anything. If you have any questions, please ask. Um, I love these ones, but they need an awful lot of water and they never work for me. So if anyone have any ideas about cardoons, let me know. So it'll be just another place where you can see it, like the, in a way I play, it's quite, I think, quite natural. I don't tend to have an harsh line, it's not that. And I think it's a cramp dish. Uh, with a slow cooked egg, which is cooked in a water bath um, at a low temperature, so it's still stays runny, but it's pasteurized, so you just kind of get that with some crab and with some curds. But all these, they're all local, all in season. It's whatever's there. But I use a lot of flowers and stuff like that that's growing, edible flowers and stuff. And you have bees on the as well. We have our own bees as well, which, um, which my dad, I think they like get a lot of purple colors and stuff like that, and lavender and things. Um, but yeah, we have our own honey. Um, we've got three beehives, um, so we get we get probably we get quite a bit, quite a bit of honey. And I kind of keep the honey coming. It keeps throughout the year, so I use that through the through the menu as well. Um, we did have chickens, so we had our own eggs. Um, it's just you know for for chefs, we're very lucky if we can tell this so and use this because it's nothing fresh than picking something from the ground or getting fresh chicken egg or your own honey. Um, it, it does tell a lovely story, but it's not just about spice, it's just about eating it, it's about tasting it. And, um, you know, unless you have good ground, good soil, you know, you're not going to get any of this sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, I think, I mean, we're not necessarily saying that everybody has to be completely into it before organic or atomic. No. But if you can do as little harm as possible to the yeah. soil while you're producing it, it's in everybody's best interest. And using to producers that you're happy to use, who have a good ethic, who have, you know, believe in, in, in good food by producing good food, I think, you know, we'll all, we can all help. And then if you teach that to the younger chefs, 
um, then they will continue that on. And I think it's happening an awful lot more now. I mean, Ireland is, I think, really developing itself in the last 10 years as a real food destination. You know, um, I think before it was a lot slower, like other countries. A lot of the trends tend to come from um, the East come from San Francisco, and then you know, hit Ireland 10 years later. You know, hit the UK five years later. So we're quite behind. Now we still are quite behind, but it's it's speed up a lot quicker, obviously, with social media and stuff like that. And yeah. suppose you like the food on the edge. Of and, yeah, well, I mean that's that's brilliant. Food on the edge is it's, you know it's great. I mean you have some amazing chefs from all over the world coming to talk about sustainability, about teaching young chefs, um, and without these sort of movements and people pushing for this, you know, it, it is fantastic to have. I think that's a pretty important thing to take out of what we're telling you. That <coughs> there is an interest now in restaurants and among chefs to have a social conscience and to have responsibility there where they can have an impact on what you end issues like this. I mean, obviously, there's so many issues related to food production and to, and to agriculture, to particularly very harmful uh, mass monoculture and the damage that that can do um, in the equity to the soil and the ability to produce food to the bee populations, the pollination, and the kind of natural pollination. And organisations like ourselves <coughs> are looking to have chefs like Robbie who are willing to come out and speak and also vent and live every day in the restaurants where they're serving food. <coughs> so I think um, that's... Yeah, I think that's kind of it. Do you have any questions? Please ask. Yeah. Please do, yeah. yeah. Sorry about the video. Yeah. <laughs> this was more impressive when we had that finished. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I, I think that's about it. It's really just... Um, it's really about where everything comes from for us, you know. And it's, um, it's very important, you know. And us as chefs, really uh, take your time and look at where stuff comes from. I'm exhausted. Sorry.